All right, everybody, uh, welcome to uh, yet another live session of this week. This is now the third or fourth. I lost track a bit. It probably won't be the last one either, uh, given what is likely to unfold over the next 24 to, uh, to 48 hours, uh, initially across Central California right now, and later into most the rest of Southern California later today, into Monday, and likely now even into Tuesday, especially uh, toward the southeasternmost part of the California coast, as we get down toward uh, Orange County and San Diego, when the rain likely won't even begin for another 24 hours. Uh, but right now, uh, I want to take a look mainly at what's going on in the places that are currently storm-affected, and those are primarily in Central California and parts of Northern California right now. Uh, I know there's lots of different definitions about what comprises Central California, and the funny thing to me about that is that it always depends on where you are. Folks in, in, northern, in far Northern California assume that Central California has a very different latitudinal dividing line than folks in Southern California, and then folks who live on the Central Coast have yet another definition. So in my head, I, I am literally you know, dividing it in the most equitable geographical way possible, where if you essentially assign, uh, the, the divide the California coast into in largely equal segments of about one third, uh, the central coast is the central third, and Southern California would be the southern third, and Northern California the northern third. Even that is subject to interpretation. There is, by the way, a little bit of uh, a meteorological distinction where the the essentially the atmospheric conditions change distinctly south of Point Conception. So there's even an argument to be made that everything south of Point Conception is Southern California, and everything north of it is Northern California from a certain meteorological perspective. Uh, culturally, it's a whole different story. But anyway, it does, it's sort of immaterial to the discussion today. Uh, what I really want to talk about uh, first, and I'm going to jump to uh, satellite and radar imagery pretty quickly, uh, but that this storm is cranking off the coast and behaving largely as expected. Now, there's lots of folks saying, why hasn't the rain been heavier at my house? Why hasn't the wind been stronger at my house yet? In a lot of cases, that's just because it hasn't arrived yet uh, at specific locations. And the other piece of that is this is a bit of an unusual storm. There is not a very well-defined cold frontal band of rainfall. There is a well-defined cold front, but those are not the same things. And in this case, this is a powerful mid-latitude cyclone that actually has characteristics of one that you might find more often over the mid middle part of the continent in the sense that there is... Um, less time for a uniform stratiform uh, precipitation band to develop along the cold front because it's such a new storm developing out of the ether uh, with very strong dynamics. This storm is really more uh, exhibiting more convective precipitation than stratiform precipitation, which is somewhat unusual in this part of the world. But it also means that there isn't necessarily a big contiguous swath of rain and, and, and stratiform precipitation as is more common with California atmospheric river storms, this is a bit different. In Northern California, there are these discontinuous but rather intense bands of convective activity, showers and thunderstorms. In other words, these bubbly, uh, tall and rapidly rising cloud tops, and they're going to bring occasional episodes of very intense precipitation, embedded lightning, and even strong damaging winds with the potential even for a a weak tornadic spin-up or two from about the Monterey County coast, or really the, the coast of the Bay Area southward. Uh, and that, that, that risk, that, that modest risk of severe thunderstorms will extend further south and east as the storm progresses further south and east. So part of the reason why you, you haven't experienced the winds yet is the low pressure remains well offshore. It's still deepening and it's still approaching. The other piece is that the strongest winds aloft are going to mix down to the surface most effectively uh, during heavy precipitation. And because uh, there is uh, only occasional bursts of very intense precipitation, th th these gusts will, in a lot of cases, be quite episodic. Calm winds in between very powerful gusts. And we are starting to see that now. In fact, the strongest winds of the event so far were just reported within the last 10 or 15 minutes along the Big Sur coast now getting gusts up to 85 miles an hour along the Big Sur coast. That is very strong. There are widespread reports of wind damage there with a much more widespread region of a 65 to 75 mile an hour gusts 
uh, on the coast side of the, the, the Santa Cruz Mountains, the, the, the Santa Lucia Mountains, and a few other places uh, uh, downwind of some of the East Bay Hills also getting very strong gusts right now. Some places it's quite calm so far. The other piece of this is that right now winds are actually out of the east from east to west in some places, uh, which is a bit of an unusual direction because of where the storm center is, meaning that it's still well offshore. As the storm center approaches, I would expect these winds to become more south-southeasterly, a more traditional storm direction, and that will probably cause winds to, to increase in some of the valley locations because a lot of them, the big central valley of course, but also a lot of these smaller valleys in the Bay Area are more uh, southwest, or excuse me, southwest to northwest aligned. Once the winds move into that alignment, it's probably going to pick up considerably. And as these bands of heavy precipitation and thunderstorms continue to intensify, that will also happen as the low approaches. So in most places, the strongest winds haven't occurred yet. Along the Monterey and Big Sur coast, they may be peaking now, but they're extremely strong. We're seeing gusts well in excess of 70 miles an hour and even 80 miles an hour in some places with a whole lot of damage being reported there. That will not be quite as strong elsewhere. I don't think we'll see widespread 80 to 85 mile an hour gusts, fortunately, but we will probably see widespread 60 to 70 plus mile an hour gusts in other places later today, and that will include a big wide swath of the Central Valley perhaps near Sacramento, even in places that have seen relatively calm winds uh, up to this point. Again, the flood risk in Northern California is less than in far as the Central Coast and in the transverse ranges of Southern California. In fact, it is much less. This is not expected to be a major flood event for Northern California, although there is localized flooding being reported. In fact, there is some sig locally significant flooding right now on the west side of the Sacramento Valley near Vacaville, uh, in winters as well as in parts of the North Bay. And that's because there's been, again, some unusual wind patterns. I'll show you on the radar how that works out later. So there will be pockets of potentially significant flooding, and those may yet escalate in places like the Santa Cruz Mountains, the Big Sur Coast, parts of the Central Bay Area, later today as these localized but very intense bands of convective activity, showers and intense thunderstorms with torrential downpours, move overhead. It's not going to be raining like that everywhere all the time, but if and when you're caught under it, there'll be a pretty significant risk of flash flooding up there. It will be a different story, though, when the storm moves into Southern California. This will have a broader, contiguous band of heavy rainfall developing from about Santa Barbara County eastward, and it's going to be very slow moving, and there are some initial indications now that it may stall out Monday into Tuesday near LA County. Uh, there are a number of mandatory evacuations in certain canyons susceptible to debris flows uh, all the way from Santa Barbara County now into Los Angeles County as well. So uh, I, I, I'm not up to date on the exact details there, but there are an expanding number of actual evacuation orders in anticipation of this very heavy rainfall event in Southern California, which is still to come. Just to reiterate, a lot of folks are saying, oh, it's sunny and 70 degrees, partly cloudy in Southern California. This storm was a bust. No, it's still just 500 miles to your west. It is absolutely coming. If anything, it looks a little bit wetter even than it did yesterday, and those were already some pretty extreme totals. As I mentioned, I thought was likely yesterday, the Weather Prediction Center has now issued uh, two consecutive uh, four out of four high-risk rainfall days for uh, much of Southern California, essentially including uh, the, the, the LA Metro, the lower elevations in downtown. This is very rare and unusual and a strong signal of a very high risk of significant flash flooding beginning late today and continuing into Monday and possibly Tuesday in some places in Southern California. So the storm is not a bust, it just hasn't started yet if it's still partly cloudy and warm where you are. Uh, and that warmth should be a bit of an indicator too of just how unusual this air mass is, warm and subtropical with a lot of instability offshore uh, there is now lightning being reported in the cells just near San Francisco. So I think what I'm going to do is jump to radar. I think we set a new record for the number of concurrent viewers. I guess we could go even higher. we got about 1,200 people right now. Uh, and what I'd like to do is I, I'm, I'm checking live uh, in a couple of moments right now, um, just looking at what some of the most recent information is saying, uh, yes, I mean, we're seeing wind gusts of 75 to 85 miles an hour now all along the Big Sur coast, the Monterey County coast. Um, not everywhere, but in the places that are aligned correctly with the wind, um, it is 
quite extreme out there at the moment. Uh, lots of flights being diverted from San Francisco airport. In fact, what I'm hearing is that there may be a ground stop. Uh, in effect, I'm not sure that any flights are departing at this point, and a lot of inbound flights are getting diverted, some to other Bay Area airports, but some just to Southern California. There just isn't enough capacity in the Bay Area to handle those incoming flights that are experiencing a lot of wind shear and uh, sort of uh, having some aborted landings. So a rough ride uh, coming in there, I think, into San Francisco right now. Um, but let's uh, let's take a look a little bit at uh, let's start with some radar uh, and I'm going to change over so you should see this fully on screen. There it is. Um, let's see here. Uh, I think I need to maximize. Well, let's just see what this looks like broadly on screen here. Um, I'm going to see what it looks like when it pops up just to make sure that it is full screen for everybody. It looks like it is. Uh, that looks good to me. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm going to do a radar tour of the Bay Area. I'm going to first make it full screen, uh, regular radar. Uh, zoom out a little bit. Um, so again, this is just one radar site. It's not a composite site. So as you get farther from the radar, the image fades just because the signal's weaker. Um, so this is a radar site. Uh, I'm going to get my drawing tool out. It's right in the Santa Cruz Mountains. This is the Mount Amanam site. Uh, so it's you're getting a, the best view. And it's a little bit of a high elevation, so you're kind of getting a high band uh, initial uh, tilt elevation, meaning that you're kind of not seeing the lowest couple thousand feet of the atmosphere. So this is a good view of what's happening on top of that. Now here's what's interesting with this. As I mentioned, there is no real contiguous uh, clear cold frontal structure here. There's just these kind of blobs of precipitation, some heavier than others, with pretty big gaps, uh, rain-free gaps in between. This is classic and expected structure from a storm like this because there is not the kind of really clearly defined stratiform precipitation band. But what there is, though, is some rapidly intensifying convective precipitation. Uh, and so I'll highlight a few of them right now. One of them is moving uh, just over the Santa Cruz Mountains and into the East Bay right now. Uh, I would expect this, uh, you know, th this is sort of intensifying in place. Uh, as it as it moves over the region, the, the re radar reflectivity doesn't look extraordinarily intense right now, uh, but these the, what these echoes are doing right now, and this precipitation is it's starting to mix some of the stronger winds down to the surface, um, and what we're seeing is sort of these 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 rain bands develop uh, in place in situ offshore, uh, and what we've got if you look in this that wasn't quite what I intended there, um, if you look offshore. You, know, you see this precipitation, it doesn't look too impressive, but if you notice, it's kind of just developing out of nowhere. And so it's not that there's a clear back edge to the front, that's not the front and it's all over. The front is actually uh, still uh, well offshore. Uh, in fact, there, there is a warm front kind of like this right now, uh, lifting northward. Uh, still, this is the warm sector of the storm, and the cold front is still somewhere out here uh, offshore, not that far offshore, the Bay Area, and you have sort of, there's a there's a triple point somewhere uh, over somewhere in that vicinity. The low pressure center is still, and I'm exaggerating, this figure is not to scale, but the low pressure system is still way back there. Uh, but there's this warm, relatively warm, moist air coming up here. What's interesting is that if we if we go further north, there's actually still really cold air trapped in the valleys up north, in fact, there's reports of accumulating wet snowfall down to about 22, 2,500 feet up in Lake County. So a pretty low snow event there. That will eventually end because there is warm, moist air coming up from the south. My point is, you know, this system, um, it's not like it fell apart or it hasn't moved through. A lot of the precipitation is going to be developing in place. And so I would expect this area really to fill in a lot as it continues to move, you know, in this general direction uh, to the north. In fact, things like this, things, uh, pockets of precipitation like this or this are likely to develop into thunderstorms later. In fact, this probably already is a thunderstorm out here. So these bands are going to continue to develop and move like this. And if they train over a certain area, I mean, even as I've been talking, you know, some of these, some of these features have intensified. I do want to go up, I'm going to go up to the, the Sacramento radar and show an interesting feature because there's some significant rain, heavy, very heavy rainfall this morning in and near uh, winters, woodlands, uh, and the, the east flanks of the coast ranges here. And again, just for folks not familiar with the geography, 
the coast ranges are sort of run in alignment uh, some, somewhere like that. So that's the axis of a ridge line that's about two to 4,000 feet in, in, in height. It, it's not the Sierra, but it is a significant topographic barrier because it is the largest one between there and the coast. What is interesting right now is we have this low pressure center, again, not to scale, way off here somewhere. Right now, there are actually winds coming out of the southeast and even the east uh, in this region. Uh, and so what we've actually got is convergence of those winds along this topographic barrier here. So we have converging winds uh, really resulting in this region of persistently heavy precipitation uh, on the west side of the Sacramento Valley. So along this axis right here, there have been a, a reports of three to five inches of rain just today. And that's a lot of water in, in the, on the eastern slopes and on the, of, of the coast ranges and on the valley floor. That there, there, there are reports of some pretty significant urban and small stream flooding up there. Looks like the rain in the central uh, part of the Sacramento Valley is also really intensifying, as is the precipitation along the western slope of the Sierra Nevada. Uh, it sounds like there's been uh, up to one to two feet of snow already in places like Truckee, uh, I think the snow level's mostly above here, but up here uh, there should be, you know, along the Highway 80 and the Highway 50 axis is in there somewhere, should be increasingly intense snowfall right now as we speak. Uh, so, uh, you know, the winds in this region are only going to pick up later, and they're going to shift. Right now they're sort of from the east, which is favoring rain uh, on the west side of the valley, as I mentioned, because you have winds that are sort of veering to the west, like this right now. Uh, later today, though, they're going to start to come more dire just directly out of the southeast, uh, and that's probably going to get rid of that bullseye on the west side of the valley, but it might favor the development of some sort of barrier jet along, along the foothills, and then that would really enhance precipitation here, as well as increase the potential for strong winds sort of uh, in this uh, actual da potentially damaging winds in this sort of corridor. So right in the Sacramento region, 50 to 65 plus mile an hour wind gusts later today. So that could definitely cause power outages and some problems there. Uh, so uh, looking again, uh, zooming out, you can see the disc discontinuous nature of the precipitation, uh, but I'm gonna go back to the Bay Area to see what that looks like, see if anything has started to fill in. Uh, and yeah, I mean, you can see just even as you've been talking, some of this precipitation offshore is, is filling in and intensifying. So it's far from over yet. I actually think that this unimpressive, currently unimpressive radar region here is going to be what produces more of the interesting and dramatic conditions later today. So uh, in, in, in some respects in the Bay Area, the storm won't peak until this afternoon or evening, even though there will be large gaps in between the intense bands of precipitation, potential thunderstorms, strong to severe thunderstorms even locally. In fact, uh, once from about, from about here southward along the coast or near the coast, there's actually a decent uh, possibility of some isolated severe thunderstorms with damaging wind gusts, torrential rainfall, and even a water spout or isolated tornado or two. Uh, yes, there could be a weak tornado or two. Uh, that will extend further southward uh, in, along the, the central coast into Southern California as the storm progresses into tomorrow. Let me take a look uh, down at Vandenberg uh, radar on the central coast. Again, it isn't super dramatic yet, but this is just the very beginning of the storm in this region. And so it is now raining uh, all the way from about light rain in Oxnard, light rain in Santa Barbara, more moderate rain along the central coast, but heavier stuff uh, still is coming. And just to illustrate that the storm is not yet in LA, um, th there's a few weak echoes over, over uh, western part of LA County, but this is mostly probably still Virga. I don't even think that's hitting the ground. So it's just some pretty clouds right now, but down in this part of California, it's just mild and dry right now. Uh, so that's not a bust. That's not contrary to predictions. The storm just hasn't arrived yet. The storm is still way, again, not to scale. The low pressure system is still way back there. All right, uh, let me uh, do another. Uh, wow, we've gotten up to 1,400 people on here. That's pretty amazing. Uh, let me see uh, what we want to show next. I want to change the window that you're seeing to... Uh, satellite. There we go. All right, so that'll change over momentarily on your side. Um, and now what you're going to see is the satellite imagery. I always just want to make sure it actually shows up. Looks like we're good. I'm going to animate this. Uh, so this is what the storm looks like right now. 
Um, as I mentioned, look at all that uh, clear air or gaps in between. So uh, the, I, I can't draw on this screen as easily, I don't believe. Uh, but the center of circulation is somewhere around here. You can kind of tell just based on where the spin is. And it is a pretty, you can tell how strongly it's spinning. You know, this is a pretty impressive uh, degree of spin. One thing you can see is that there are, there are these convective bands and individual cells heading into the Bay Area. Uh, that thunderstorm offshore, for example, that heavy rain over on the west side of the Sacramento Valley, there are gaps in the clouds, but this does not mean that there's nothing out there. Right now, that there are some screaming winds out over the open ocean in these clear slots. And as the atmospheric instability, so the, the instability, the large scale lift, this whole area is favorable for, for synoptic and mesoscale upward vertical motion, which generates clouds and precipitation. As the wind shear and instability increases later today, the potential for thunderstorms and severe weather will start to increase, especially on this section of coast into the southern Bay Area. So let me just pull up a couple of extra uh, data layers here. Uh, there is, let's see what we've got. Uh, could bring up, um, let's bring up the, the, the analysis to show some structure. Uh, this is just an example. So here's a better, yeah, so as you can see, here's where the official uh, low pressure position is right now. These are some upper level wind swaths. You can literally see, so you see where these uh, ISO lines diverge in this region here, uh, essentially where they become more, they, they become narrowly spaced and more widely spaced. This means that there is uh, difluence or even uh, uh, divergence aloft in this sort of arc where there's divergence. So this is why there's such an expanding cloud layer. Uh, but there's also divergence still right in, immediately aligned with the Bay Area. You can see that the streamlines are still diverging and that the upper level winds are starting to veer a little bit uh, more to the south and easterly, although they're still out of the southwest aloft. So really what this says is this is still a very favorable region for further intensification of the low pressure area, further intensification of these rain bands and developments of thunderstorms later. Uh, so I'm gonna turn this layer off now uh, and what you can see is that there is, here, here is this developing atmospheric river across Southern California that's gonna be with us for 48 more hours, so get used to it. Uh, but let's see what else uh, is going on here uh, in things that I can pull up. Uh, yep, uh, so there have been uh, a few lightning strikes recently. You can see them, one, a few just near San Francisco, and now more recently there is light, officially now lightning in that blob offshore that I mentioned on the radar. So there are thunderstorms out there I would expect that activity to pick up as the day goes on. Uh, and then let's see, uh, so I think that's mostly what I can uh, illustrate here, except if I zoom out uh, and show the bigger picture of what's going on here, here's the big picture. And what you can see is that look how far back this, 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 uh, this comet cloud goes. I mean, there's Hawaii. This comet cloud is going back all the way off the edge of the image, well southeast of Hawaii. So. That's a very low latitude system. You can see all this popcorn convection back here that's signifying the cold air mass, the much warmer air mass in this warm sector. You can see how this system is classically sort of a mid-latitude cyclone. The problem in Southern California is that this moisture fetch is just gonna be continue to be, this as the system starts to lift north and east, this is just going to increasingly align across Southern California over the next couple of days and it's just gonna sit there and intensify as it does so. So that's the big concern for flooding later across Southern California. It's also why Northern California, although they're getting a big wind event and could see some flash flooding locally from intense thunderstorms later, this is not, uh, it, this is not an epic flood event for Northern California because it just isn't in the right position for this storm to see really high rainfall totals. Your mileage may vary locally, but in general, this is not a huge flood event for Northern California. It well could be a very high-end flood event for this part of the state, though, even though the rain has barely started. And then, say, in San Diego, it is literally sunny and warm, pleasant day right now. All right, and I want to bring up one more thing, uh, which is uh, the power outage map in California. Uh, these power outages have actually been increasing. In fact, they've just increased by a considerable margin since the last refresh. Uh, this is a cool website, poweroutage.us. This is updated in real time. You can see that now there are a significant number of outages starting uh, in Santa Barbara County, there's about 11,000 people out, San Luis Obispo, another about 12,000, Monterey County, uh, 17,000 people out of power, uh, and again, people, these are customers, so usually there's two or three people per customer because it goes by building. 
So it can actually be a lot more people affected than there are customers affected. This is a significant portion of Monterey County, 20,000 20, customers out of 175,000 in Santa Cruz County, that's actually an even larger fraction, Santa Clara County. Similarly, it's creeping up there. Some outages in Alameda, though it's not a substantial, Solano, Napa, Sonoma, and then a, a significant fraction again up in Mendocino County, and some of that may actually be from that low elevation snowfall, as well as from the stronger winds. So. I would expect, you could, this is sort of a wind impacts map uh, in, in a general sense, and I would expect that these outages will continue to increase into the afternoon. Currently 140,000 customers out, which is a substantial amount of outages. It's not an extremely high number, but I would expect that to go up considerably. Later today, probably filling in across the Central Bay Area and then the Central Valley, uh, Sacramento area as well, later on once the winds pick up there. All right, so I'm going to bring myself back onto the screen. Uh, you're going to see this go away. I'm going to start looking again at a couple other things uh, in the meantime, um, just looking at some of my own sources in the background to keep an eye on what's going on here. Uh, looks like um, just trying to bring back up the main screen here. Um, even more people. Wow, there are a lot of folks interested in this. Um, all right, so uh, I'm going to take a quick sip of tea. You know the drill if you've been watching these. I'm going to take a sip of tea. You might see an ad while I start reading the now dozens of comments, and then I'll rejoin you in about 15 to 20 seconds. How does that sound? Uh, you'll still see me. I'll be sipping tea in the background. So give me just a minute here. All right here. Um, just starting to go through here. Yeah, folks uh, talking about how there's been a significant uptick in storm intensity recently in the Santa Cruz Mountains. The rainfall rates have gone up, the wind is picking up, the power is now out. Um, Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a bit of an unusual pattern for Northern California, for sure. No doubt about that. Uh, just looking to see if there are any further recent reports. Uh, looking at the WeatherWets comments and t Twitter or X or whatever it's called these days. Um, just to see um, what else is going on here. Right, yes. Um, Things are expected to pick up later in the afternoon uh, in a lot of places. Despite the fact that there, it looks like there's clear slots offshore, that does not mean that the weather uh, is going to be better as that area uh, moves onshore. All right, so I'm gonna start looking at the questions here uh, in the comment section. Uh, really a, an interesting mix of experiences. Some people saying it's the strongest winds they've ever experienced in the Bay Area in Northern California. Other people saying that it is remarkably dead calm. Same thing with rain. Some people saying it's some of the heaviest rains they've seen. Some people saying it's the, it's a big bust. Uh, again, this is speaking to the discontinuous nature of the event itself in terms of the pattern. And I would expect that certain areas they haven't seen much yet, we'll see a lot more later. Some places may end up, you know, getting skipped out on, uh, but uh, I do think that there's going to be a lot of this that fills in. And again, Southern California, this hasn't even begun, and if anything, it looks a little bit even more concerning in terms of flood risk today than it did a couple of days ago. Uh, let's see. All right here. Uh, yeah, uh, so far, Santa Barbara, Goleta uh, reporting some light rains, but pretty strong winds. Again, that's going to reverse later where the winds will peak before the rain does probably, and then the rain is going to become the big problem. Several folks have pointed out the Marin and Sonoma uh, are now under a flood warning, which is a slight, not, not for any specific river or stream, but generally for, for smaller watersheds. I think this is actually an anticipation of heavier thunderstorm downpours later today. 
so that is going to be something uh, that really escalates as those convective bands spin on shore. It's a little bit hard to predict exactly where and to what degree th that'll happen because uh, you know it's it's essentially uh, not something that the global models can resolve, and it's not even necessarily something that the high resolution models can easily resolve. So. This is definitely a watch the satellite and radar kind of day for uh, Northern California and the Central Coast. One thing I did want to add too is that the Big Sur coastline is really just getting raked. I already mentioned how there's widespread wind gusts of 75 to 85 miles an hour with extensive wind gusts, extensive wind damage, and widespread power outages there. But also, uh, the rainfall there has been very intense and is going to continue for many hours. So uh, the, the likelihood of a big, a big uh, debris flows or slides on Highway 1 and areas like that will continue to increase through the day as that goes on and on. Um, yeah, continuing to see like a real mix of reports, um, but uh, again, I think that's going to fill in and shift as the day goes on. All right. Yeah, hurricane-like conditions in Santa Margarita, California, there are definitely wind gusts that are like what you might experience in a, in a Category 1 hurricane. There are wind gusts of 80-plus miles an hour in some places uh, along the Big Sur coast. So that is, uh, by the way, the Weather Service in Monterey issued, I believe, for the first time in their history, a hurricane force wind warning for the offshore waters west of Monterey County. So that does not mean that the storm itself is a true hurricane, meaning that it is not a tropical uh, derived system where all of its energy is coming from warm oceans, but it does mean that this is a hurricane strength extratropical uh, system with what are essentially hurricane force sustained winds offshore uh, coming from the more traditional winter uh, baroclinic instability derived type storm. So this, this is in some ways uh, like the, in some places, will be like the impacts of a, of a Category 1 uh, hurricane. Not everywhere and not in every potential capacity, but in terms of the kind of rain this will produce at its maximum and its maximum wind gusts, in that sense, it's not all that off. Again, continuing reports of either very heavy rain and very strong winds or very little of either, which is fascinating, but expected in a storm like this. And again, California is a big state, and even the central part of California is a large region, geographically diverse region, so all of that is to be expected to a certain point. Let's see here. Yeah, um, just seeing a lot of interesting reports of continuing mixed conditions there. Uh, is there any scenario where San Diego gets hit at this point? Yeah, uh, definitely. It's just going to take until late Monday or Tuesday, so just wait. Uh, this is a slow-moving storm, and that is one of the problems with it. I don't think San Diego will be hit as hard as LA area or Ventura, but there will be heavy rain and potential for major thunderstorms later. Probably not by wind that far south, but late Monday to Tuesday, I think, yes, down in San Diego, it, it, it'll get uh, pretty pretty spicy later on. Um, I know folks are looking for Big Sur Kate, uh, see if, if she's logged in. My guess is that uh, she may not have power or internet at this point, given how hard uh, the Monterey County coast has been hit in the Big Sur area. So this is this is definitely an extreme storm in that section of the California coast already to the point where, as usual, uh, the, the, the less news we hear from some of these places, the worse the damage probably is initially. And I think that's probably what's going on uh, if she's not around, uh, since I know that there are folks that have been hit quite hard in that area from what I've heard coming out of the region. Uh, let's see. Are the Hurricane Hunter planes flying through the storm? Yes, they are. They, are, they were yesterday. They probably are again today. Uh, increasingly, we are using the, the, the Hurricane Hunting aircraft during winter storms uh, along the West Coast uh, because additional uh, data from those missions can considerably improve predictions. Uh, so this has gone from being 
uh, mainly a scientific uh, question to being increasingly an operational meteorology relevant thing, where these uh, these features are being uh, these 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 systems are being um, sort of tracked by the kinds of uh, aircraft that we typically fly into and above hurricanes in the Atlantic Ocean during the warm season months. The, the convenient piece about this is that those crews are still uh, still exist and the aircraft still exist and you don't really get hurricanes in the winter. So there's an almost uh, equal and opposite kind of uh, compensation there where uh, the crews and the aircraft that you would use during hurricane season are not being used for those purposes during the winter. So there's a nice alignment there. I think it's an interesting... Uh, there's a lot of collaboration with UC San Diego and Scripps on ingesting that information and doing the science on how much it makes a difference. Uh, let's see. Ah, Big Sir Kate is online. I, I'm, I'm a little bit behind. I've been reading through the comments. Um, sounds like uh, she's reporting a gust of 60 miles an hour so far lo 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 locally where she is with lots of power poles down, hazards up and down. Um, so uh, there may yet be stronger gusts later today, but perhaps uh, you know it, your mileage may vary depending on exactly where you are. There is probably, by the way, some folks are saying that there's very little rain in like Big Sur Valley uh, and some east-facing uh, slopes. This is likely to be because of rain shadowing due to the unusual wind direction so far. That may change later uh, as, as the wind direction shifts. So I wouldn't count that out. Um, just to correct, the, the GLM has been showing some lightning with the system. Not, not a ton, but definitely more recently and actually more closer to the coast. I would expect that to increase later today. Will this kickstart the snowpack? Yes, probably, because it is finally snowing down at lower elevations, and that's likely to continue for much of the day. So uh, that's, that's going to be a real consideration. Uh, reporting from Ventura, Jenny Jacobs, uh, that it is pouring. So there is some significant rain making it a little bit, making some eastward progress. Um, Anthony Edwards, San Francisco Chronicle, reporting that in Truckee, it's uh, pretty crazy right now, looking like two or three inches per hour, uh, presumably of uh, snow. That is, uh, that's a very heavy snowfall rate, and so travel is probably going to be coming almost impossible across the mountains if it isn't already. Uh, and that's a pretty healthy rate of accumulation that's going to continue for much of the day. Um, wow, uh, report from Davis that it's only 43 degrees right now, so the warm front still hasn't made it there yet. It certainly seems not. I mean, and that's that cold air mass trapped in some of the valleys up in Northern California. You go up a couple thousand feet and it's snowing up in Lake County. I don't know if it's snowing at lake level, but slightly above lake level it is snowing. So that, that warm air is taking its time. Uh, that's for sure. Uh, no rain in Hollywood yet? Yeah, as I showed on the radar, it's too early. Uh, the storm is still to your west. Um, let's see here. Just continuing to take a look uh, at, the, uh, at the most recent updates here. And I'm going to go back in a few minutes and take a look at the radar again, uh, share that with everybody. And I'll probably have another session later today. Uh, time TBD, but I'll kind of base it on the radar. So if you subscribe or if you follow me already on other social media sites, I'll post it on I'll, uh, once I decide on a time. Or if you get YouTube notifications, you'll just be notified automatically once I set a time and once I start. Um, that's also a hedge against me accidentally setting it for the wrong time, by the way, since you'll just know when I actually show up. That's one option. Um, let's see here. Ah, some, some uh, big weasel reporting a very heavy snow rate up in McLeod. Um, apparently three to four inches per hour. Um, that's a very high snowfall rate, but given the forcing and the, the low-level cold air trapped uh, up north, uh, that is certainly seems to be possible. It's actually mainly overrunning, so warm advection. Uh, that can produce significant snowstorms sometimes uh, in, in, those, uh, in those conditions, and it seems like that's the case. So 
Um, that's that's uh, that's fortunate. A couple of folks complaining that I haven't shown maps. Uh, you did miss that part of uh, the session in the first uh, 20 to 30 minutes. And as I mentioned, I'll go back to that in a minute. Um, is the low deepening to a lower pressure than expected? No, I don't think it's lower than expected. Um, well, I guess lower than expected to be clear. Lower than expected would be stronger than expected. That that would be a uh, lower than expected would be a stronger storm. Uh, I'm not. I don't think it's down to 975 millibars. As I mentioned, there was a range of potential outcomes. It probably hasn't stopped deepening yet, though. So it's it might be bottoming out later this afternoon. So we'll have to see what happens with that. That I don't know uh, exactly uh, where we stand. That will be part of the analysis later. The point is, it doesn't matter greatly in terms of impacts. If it doesn't deepen quite as as much, we might not see quite as strong and widespread wind impacts. I don't think anybody will complain about that. But I still think we're going to see, I mean, A, we don't know how much it's going to deepen still the rest of the day, and B, it would only slightly mitigate the winds relative to what I've been talking about yesterday. Uh, comment uh, from Cal uh, Calgro uh, that uh, Point Conception is getting uh, pretty nasty, which I would expect based on that uh, position in all of the radar imagery right now. Uh, why does the storm seem to split? Uh, the low pressure spins to the north and tropical tap heads south. Um, it's not really splitting. That's just sort of the nature of the flow pattern uh, in, in a system like this. Um, and that is, uh, it's not splitting. In fact, the storm is actually kind of doing the opposite. There's a lot of convergence going on uh, at low levels, which is favorable for that precipitation. Uh, let's see. Um, Foggy sunset, uh, I'm guessing that refers to the, the western side of San Francisco. Oh yeah, there you go, ocean side of San Francisco. Winds not that impressive locally, but it's the rain is uh, really picking up. It's pouring and there's reports of uh, roads starting to flood in the heat. So that's uh, urban urban and street flooding in San Francisco starting to pick up. Um, let's see here. Um, Potential stall in LA County later, that is actually an increasing concern, which is why there have been some evacuation orders preemptively. Uh, that's uh, that's a bit of a, 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 a challenge. Um, let's see here. Uh, but yes, but the, the, the real possibility is that this, this system really still could stall out somewhere between Santa Barbara and Orange County and cause big problems. So that is uh, something to keep a close eye on and something that the, the, uh, it hasn't really changed since yesterday. The stalls may be looking slightly more likely than yesterday, so slightly more concern. But I will uh, take a closer look at that probably during the session later today because we'll have a little bit more information then. The storm will be a little bit closer. Uh, the weather service in LA actually increased rain totals in the recent cycle for Southern California. Is that due to the, the possibility of a, of a stall of the system across that region? I think that is part of the reason. So um, I don't necessarily know all the inside intel, but that is plausible and that is a source of major concern. Uh, four to eight inches. Um, uh, on the coastal plain possible in LA County. So that is a very, very big storm and a considerable fraction of the total average annual precipitation in that region. Um, let's see here. Uh, I'm gonna, as I mentioned, I'm gonna go back to some radar graphics in a moment, but I just wanna get through all the comments uh, here now. The storm may be a little bit slower uh, than some of the initial predictions, but I think it's generally consistent. Um, all right, yeah, uh, report of about a foot of snow already in Truckee, which is you know, it's it not, it's just, it's just the beginning up there. And a report of some very windy conditions in Morro Bay. So I'm gonna look at a couple of other sources and then go back to radar. Uh, let's see, let's see what we're, what we're seeing here. Um, 
some strong winds uh, in the, at the grapevine right now. In fact, those are only going to get worse. So that's probably going to be a consideration later today. Um, looks like the Weather Service in Sacramento just issued a flood advisory for the, the west side of the and the central Sacramento Valley. So that's that heavy uh, rain region I was showing up on the radar earlier. All right. Uh, and then uh, in terms of anything new on Weather West, just checking that out. Um, yeah, uh, getting uh, getting some reports now of rainfall over four inches on the west side of the Sacramento Valley. So uh, that's very heavy. Um, and uh, flooding uh, Point Reyes, Petaluma Road. So there is, you know, there's a growing amount of, of flood related impacts, I think, at this point in some pockets that aren't necessarily where you'd expect, uh, but that's that's where it's coming in right now. And it will probably fill in later today. As I mentioned, okay, I'm going to go back to radar. I just need to share it with everybody. Um, well, I guess you're seeing the power outage tracker. I might as well refresh that while I have it up on screen. Let's see what the most recent. Yep. So continuing to increase from last update, 140 to now 152,000 customers out. Again, you can continue to see most of this is from wind impacts, but maybe up in Mendocino County, I think there might be some low snow uh, impacts as well. So I'd expect those outages to continue to grow later. Uh, take a look uh, at satellite imagery again. I'll, I'll, I'll throw up the, uh, the GLM flashes, look at the lightning. Um, continuing now to see strikes in the cell uh, offshore. Um, would expect to see more of that later. Uh, and then I'll go back to, I need to share a different application now uh, I need to share the radar radar scope just need to get that up on screen there we go you should be seeing this once again the radar imagery on screen all right so now that you're seeing uh, seeing some radar again let me do a tour again this is all live so this is whatever has changed has occurred since we've been talking um take a look at that let me get that drawing tool away uh that as i mentioned these cells offshore this is looking like a pretty robust thunderstorm again this is well west of the bay area this stuff is just and, and these other cells are starting to develop so there are cells thunderstorms developing there's that one's producing a decent amount of lightning I'll bring up the the wind, uh, the, the storm relative velocity. So these, this is a measure on the left is the precipitation intensity of the echoes. The right is the strength of the winds as measured by the radar coming back from those precipitation echoes. And as, you, as everyone's been reporting, you know, there's these discontinuous blobs, right? There's some very intense thunderstorms offshore, some developing convection. This area, as I mentioned earlier, is continuing to fill in. And I think this will be interesting later. But right now, you know, the rainfall rates, uh, Santa Cruz Mountains, not too extreme up, up into Marin County, not too extreme. It continues to be really heavy, though, uh, on the hills uh, above the Carmel River Valley, although in the Carmel, part of this gap in the radar, by the way, is just the topographic beam interruption from the Amanum site. Uh, but there probably is also a real gap in the rainfall intensity down in that Carmel Valley, but it is very heavy in the mountains above Big Sur right now, continuing. Um, Bob up uh, that we were talking about, the people have been reporting flooding from. Um, you know, that heavy rain con sort of continues in this sort of wedge, that's sort of where, the, whoops, that, I went a little bit further west than I intended to do with that. My mouse is a little bit behaving a little bit strangely. I'm all done. Those very heavy snow rates, uh, we, got, we heard those reports from uh, from Truckee, uh, the beam intensity doesn't quite do it justice. So maybe consistent snow. It looks like there's probably some snow moving into Reno. So there's just snow. There's not a whole lot of structure on the radar up there. Uh, let me see if there's anything up um, up at Beale Air Force Base. This is up in the North Valley. Uh, yeah, you can see uh, that there is some pretty heavy stuff falling now on the west side of the Sacramento Valley. So the e the e foothills 
uh, McLeod, the reports of heavy snowfall. There's probably some pretty heavy. Uh, go back to the Bay Area. Um, one thing I wanted, I did want to show, I'll, I'll use the inspection tool here uh, to, to show some of these wind speeds aloft are, you know, are quite strong. So we're seeing, you know, winds aloft, you know, 50, 60, 70 miles an hour. Some of these are what's mixing down to the surface in big, in, you know, again, and this is, this is above the surface, this is a few thousand feet above the surface, but those are the winds that the ridge, ridge lines are seeing, that the open ocean is seeing, uh, and that the, uh, again, on, Part of the problem maybe is we had a big upslope snowstorm. In fact, it was the wettest winter day in Boulder history yesterday because of a very wet snowstorm. We got about 10 inches of extremely heavy dense snow that was about a one, a one and a half or over one and a half inches liquid equivalent. So this has been causing problems. Trees and power lines have been coming down. So we had power intermittently all day yesterday. I'm, I'm guessing that what's happening is that there is uh, some intermittent problems with the internet connectivity uh, right now. Um, that would be my prediction. So, um, let me just, um, Give, give, give me a moment. I'm going to step away and check the physical internet connection. So if you can hear me, um, if you can hear me, feel free to hang in there and I, I'm, I'm going to leave this on and go see what I can find. So uh, just just for folks um, and see it, um, I, I I think that it I, I I'm going to quickly uh, reload myself to see what I can find uh, as as being the problem here. Um, let's see if I if I I'm going to share. My, myself again, see if people see me. If you're live, you'll see me, the radar go away and you'll see my face again. Um, I think the the challenge is probably uh, on the on the connection side on my end. Um, it looks like um, yeah, my my internet speed and upload ability right now is low. Um, just working to see if I can resolve that or whether I should just probably come back later. Uh, just working to see if I can get that connection. Please stand by. All right, um, I Um, just, uh, just to clarify, uh, I am still here. You may see, um, 
a break for a moment. I'm going to bring the radar back uh, so you don't watch me troubleshooting actively, uh, just so there's something more interesting on the screen to look at. Uh, and I'm actually I'm going to change that over to just the single panel, so there's a, 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 a more uh, closer view of what's going on. Let me turn that tool off. Um, you should see that. Um, So uh, again, um, I'm going to try a few things on my end. I may not be able to resolve it because it looks like there is potentially a major upload speed problem on my end. I, there's only so much I can do about that. Um, I'm going to see, yeah, it's, uh, it looks like right now on a wired connection, there's like 20% packet loss. So there is a problem. So there's a wire somewhere that is having a problem. So hopefully this can something that can get fixed. Uh, but that is what is going on. Um, yeah, I have, uh, my wired upload speed is under one megabit per second. So it's actually kind of amazing that there's any connection at all at this point. So, um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is, um, I think I'm going to end the stream for now. Um, Well, um, I think that's the best that I can do right now uh, with it. Oh, what? Wait, maybe, maybe did it just uh, did it just come back? Let's see. Let's see if this is the magic magic moment. Uh, connection speeds higher, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Going, going. Packet loss is better. Um, nope. Just kidding. Um, all right. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna 